match until the tea interval sunshine for most of the day but as always when the West Indies find themselves in something of a corner they punch pretty hard and uh, really today it's been a ward of attrition for the England batsmen and the umpires have decided that the, the rain's a little too much and again it's a thing for the umpires to balance because the fielding side now won't be too unhappy about going off the ball has started to get wet and uh, the umpires really have to balance their judgments and it was five o'clock when they did just that they didn't come back on the field so England finished the third day of this Cornhill test at 143 for six Gooch a magnificent innings 82 out of 143 Pringle is with him on 10 and the only other double figure score was young Mark Ramprakash who made 27 exactly the same score as in the first innings the bowling figures for West Indies one man dominated the whole thing as indeed he did against England in Barbados in the test match uh, on the recent tour 21 overs, 5 maidens, 6 for 36, and that after not having his rhythm early in his first spell, didn't look uh, to be in control of the situation then, came back magnificently. That is a wonderful performance and just underlines what a great bowler he is. So the uh, weather on this fourth day, quite good. Chilly once again, and uh, the forecast not so good because they say there will be heavy showers later in the day. We join play now in the first over. Kirtley Ambrose is the bowler, Graham Gooch is taking strike and two runs have been added to the overnight score. First full stroke of the day and what we've seen in that pitch in movement and lift, still there. We'll be looking for two. But no. That's England's 150, any little landmark, the crowd, relieved applause almost. He's got that one. First boundary of the day. Yes, now that was right in Derek Pringle's area fairly straightish ball you watch how he works it to the onside a little bit hits it quite nice in the middle of the bat that ball pitching about off stump but he gets outside the ball pitching off stump even outside off stump but he gets outside it and hits it to the onside that's how he plays at his best every so often they can produce an absolutely cracking delivery vote for the bowler <laughs> top shot good cricket from Pringle it wasn't all that short and it was pretty quick played it well what a good shot from Derek Pringle he's onto this feet movement really quickly he gets into position and again hits it to his favourite side he's had a couple of short balls to fend off from Patterson and this one short of a length he's in there very quickly just a little That's a very good stroke from uh, Graham Gooch this partnership now has taken the score from 124 to 169 well Graham Gooch has been very patient waiting for this he's kept his concentration and when Kirtley Ambrose has just tried to pitch the ball up half a yard he's had a lovely touch here the feet go into early position and uh, just caress that away to the boundary 45, the partnership between this pair, skipper on the left and uh, the all-rounder on the right. Great fielding. 
It was brilliant, uh, close in at short leg, and anywhere else for that matter. Just uh, 45 balls. Beautiful. Oh, that's a good shot. 50 stand between Gooch and Pringle. A lead now in excess of 200. That was a super stroke. Well, this is a cracking shot from Graham Gooch, almost dismissive of the short of a length ball. It absolutely scorched across the turf. Remember, this turf has had a lot of rain as well in the outfield, but that disappeared very quickly to the boundary. Yes, and already West Indies need the what will be the highest score of the match. He has to make an exit. Well, that just might be it, and is. And uh, the crowd, it's only a sparse one, but they're standing. And that really is a wonderful hundred. Not only in the context of the match, but uh, just look at that for a reception, the conditions, the attack. And congratulations from all corners of the ground. His 14th hundred for England, 10th in this country, and his fifth against the West Indies. Bonus. The ball kept low. And uh, Jeffrey Dujon made uh, rather an ungainly stab at it. Gooch now goes to 108, England to 195, and the lead to 220. New ball coming up at uh, 85 overs. Ambrose and Patterson have been rested for what will be a massive onslaught, I would think. Two very fine shots played by Gooch in the last two overs, one off Marshall and uh, now off Courtney Walsh. Uh, Walsh is trying to catch Richard's eye for a field change. Richard's uh, is looking somewhere else. He probably thinks he doesn't need a field change for a ball that is short outside off stump. He has the ability to swing the ball more than anybody else in the West Indian side. He can swing it in or out. Used to be mainly an outswinger in his earlier days, but uh, he has used the inswinger a lot more in the last couple of seasons. Well, I have said that it's a slow outfield, but. Uh, that's not making much difference to Graham Gooch now. That big heavy bat's coming through with more command every time he plays the shot. 231 ahead, England. Now Walsh, the bowler. Gooch taking strike. The man back on the fence to allow the single at point. Ball's looking a bit ragged to me. Mm, I think the West Indian ball is looking a bit ragged as well at the moment, where Gooch is playing. Played some tremendous shots this last four overs now. Timing absolutely perfect. Both sides of the wicket. Nearly every four is it in the last few overs. There's been no need to move, even on this slow outfield. Beautiful stroke. Just a little flick. Not a full-blooded pull, but it still landed three parts of the way to the boundary and rolled over the rope. Now then, 
the new ball is about to be taken. Umpire Shepherd is going to give it to uh, umpire Bird, who's going to give it to Malcolm Marshall. Game. Raymond Dillon with the fellow commentator. He was captain of the successful England team against West Indies. We won two out of three test matches. Ooh, that is close. Didn't get up all that high, must have darted back, and clearly umpire Shepherd decides darted back too much. Yeah, it's just a typical Courtney Walsh ball, a real light, fast off break, pitching well outside the off stump, but it comes back such a long way, and it may look in front of the stumps, but from where it pitched and then where it hit the pad, it would have missed the stumps, I think, quite uh, easily. Great shot. Once anything's in the wrong area now, he's so quickly onto it. Well, he really has got the pace of the pitch this last half hour. Raymond dealing with mentioned. Once he hits it, he's a powerful lad. He's got a heavy bat. He's not even bothering to run there. He's just picking off the bowlers. Malcolm Marshall coming off a short run. Ah, oh, and that's the end of it. Well, Derek Pringle having played such a priceless innings for England in support. And finally Marshall strikes with a new ball. England 222 for seven. What a great stand that was. Partnership of 98 with Derek Pringle playing his full part with 27. Yeah, it's a terrific innings. Wonderful support innings by Derek Pringle. A lot of maturity and experience went into that innings, playing second fiddle to, to Gooch and not panicking. He knew he was playing the partner to Gooch. And just the extra bounce of the new ball and the experience of Malcolm, who uh, just went off a short run, really. He just went off a half run, came in, used the new ball perfectly to get a little bit of extra bounce, tried something different, and it worked to get rid of Derek Finger. That's when Philip De Freitas. His job will be to try and follow Pringle in and just stay there while Graham Gooch is in this sort of form. Oh, straight through Graham Gooch. I suppose he'll be rather pleased to see that sort of thing happening with a new ball. Yet still the game working towards a terrific climax. Now the umpires are having a look about the light and probably Gooch will accept that, which he has. 116 minutes were lost through bad light and rain. Graham Gooch was offered the light and uh, accepted it from uh, umpires Harold Bird and David Shepherd, as one might have expected in those circumstances. After that, the covers went on, and it was a frustrating time for the England players. They were keen to get out there again and uh, get on the board as many runs as was possible before the close of play. It's the second over after tea now. Malcolm Marshall is the bowler, and taking strike is the England captain. That's out. De Freitas goes halfway forward. A straight ball from Courtney Walsh, which was uh, pitched well up. And so Graham Gooch loses yet another partner. Well, they're delighted. London full swing. And De Freitas there missing a very, very full length delivery from Walsh. Well, good full length, just playing slightly across the line. Ball angled in from Wall. She doesn't get too close to the stumps. So De Freitas goes. LBW for Walsh for three. <laughs> and the new batsman is Steve Watkin. No ball. He's caught him. It just took two balls. And Watkins' bat was hanging out, and Hooper took a very good catch. One of three excellent catches he's taken in the match. Low down with consummate ease. Yeah, it's not easy for 9-10 Jutsman against this West Indian side and walking really just a little bit late again on that. Didn't do too much 
can see not in a very good position for a straightforward low down catch to Hooper at second slip. Graham Gooch will be the first man to bat straight through an England test innings, the first since Geoffrey Boycott in Perth in 1979-80 when Jeff scored 99 not out. That's 150 for Graham Gooch. What an effort this has been in the dressing room that uh, well, it was anxious for the beginnings yesterday and most of this morning, but now Gooch has pulled them ahead. Sixth time in Test cricket is up to 150. In the context of the match, and on this pitch and against this attack, I doubt whether he's played a finer innings for his country. Looks as though he's looking for two, and he's going for it. <laughs> Umpire Bird always makes a habit, if he thinks there's going to be a run out, of taking a stride or two forward. Well, he did, and then he went horizontal. <laughs> Here we are, Dickie. Let's see what happened. Watch Here goes Dickie. He's, oh. he's coming forward <laughs> and he's down. He's probably got crepes on and slipped on the green grass. Three balls of the over left. Shorter run from Marshall. Oh, and runs. In fact, four of them. Yeah, the most effective block he's done yet. Crowd are happy brought up the 250. Well, I'm not sure how you describe this, whether he's just stopping the ball or it is an authentic straight drive. It really is annoying when you get through most of the top order batsmen and in comes someone who you think, well, a couple of straight balls and should all be over. But he plays and misses and then when he bowls it straight, he stops it and even does that. add insult to injury then when he blasts you straight back past you for four. Well, that's bowled him, that's enough. So, all out, 252. 277 the lead, West Indies need 278 to win. And Graham Gooch carries his bat, the first one since Geoffrey Boycott. Graham Gooch, 154 not out. His highest score against the West Indies. And just listen to the hand, the reception from this crowd. Well, Graham Gooch leaves the field now, and I can't imagine that he has ever played a better innings than that. Absolutely superb, 154 not out, out of an England total of 252, and only three double-figure scores there, each of Ramprakash and Pringle making 27. 21 extras in that total, 252. Quite a superb effort from Gooch in the face of splendid bowling from Kirtley Ambrose, who finished with six for 52. He had six wickets, at the start of the day and remained on that figure. 28 overs and six maidens. Michael Marshall had three for 58 and Courtney Walsh one for 61 at the close of the innings. Now the match situation says that West Indies need 278 to win. Their opening batsman, Desmond Haynes, and the man taking strike now, Philip Simmons. Philip De Freitas is the ball. First ball. First ball for Phil Simmons, and more important for England, it's first ball for Philip De Freitas. Well, he was looking to play a short, it was just short of a length, possibly just came back a little bit, got an inside edge and down to the stumps, but certainly looking to play a short straight away was the point we made, and uh, he was looking to crack it away. And we see it, De Freitas just short of a length, just, just come by a fraction, bounces a little bit, Inside edge down to that leg stump, and what a start for England. This will really give England a chance to get into that West End lineup tonight. Well, Richie Richardson will uh, have been just reaching for his pads when the two batsmen reached the centre. He'll have been uh, going through all the leisurely things one does.
Richie Richardson uh, has the ability and often the inclination just to pull the bat away. Bowler. And Richardson has taken four. And his final score at the close of play up to 11 for one. The man out Simmons, that uh, great breakthrough by De Freitas, who finished up with one for six from four overs and two maidens, the one over from Devon Malcolm, and Pringle three overs, one maiden, and no wicket for four. And I should think all that made Graham Gooch a very, very delighted man at the close of play. Here he is now talking with Tony Lewis. Well, Graham, your personal best.